I'm Werner Vinge and I'm a science fiction writer. I really felt a sort of internal intellectual revolution when I read uh, David Friedman's Machinery of Freedom. The, the sort of pure form that David Friedman wrote about in Machinery of Freedom and wrote about it very, very attractively and brilliantly uh, made a big difference to me. Science fiction has always been the, the, the great reading influence on me, uh, starting with writers like Paul Anderson and Robert Heinlein and Arthur C. Clarke, and many more, but th those are, are three very important ones. Science fiction, more than any other genre that I know about, allows you to write stories that experiment uh, with things. And fiction, in, 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 in general, more than any other art form, is one that uses the consumer's mind and imagination as a display device. And so this means that in, in theory, um, a writer, if they can engage the reader, can impress readers that are a lot smarter than the writer is. Rainbow's End grew out of a story with a similar technology called Fast Times at Fairmont High. And I tried to make the world a lot, you know, quite recognizable from our, our present world, but it just takes the trends that I think everybody, uh, you know, who's, who's w watching this online is very much aware of and just pushes those um, with a couple elements that are just be beginning to become widely, you know, popular. Uh, one is the, is the notion of embedded processors in almost everything. The other is that those are networked. Uh, and the, 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 the third thing is that these devices uh, know where they are and they can talk to one another. Uh, that is sort of an internet beneath the internet, a digital plankton layer. Uh, and that's, that can support some very uh, strange things, especially once you get proper display devices. The way I use the term singularity is to, when I'm talking about technology, is the, the um, feeling that in the um, relatively uh, near historical future that uh, we humans uh, um, using technology will create or become um, creatures of superhuman intelligence. And the reason why this is special compared to uh, other forms of technological progress is that if it happens, then um, the fundamental thing that has put us at the top of the, or what we regard as the top of the pyramid in the world, um, is, has now been trumped, and that there is, is, is something in, in that direction, something even better that is, that is going along. And so, in the, in the 1800s and the 1900s and, and the 20th century, you could talk about and predict a technology. Some people were right and some people were wrong. Um, and in the end, things that what's happened is, is probably mostly unexpected. But if you could magically talk to somebody from the 1800s, like Mark Twain, who would be all ears since he was a technophile, you could explain what's going on in, in, in our era, probably in as much time as this interview is taking. And he might not believe you, but he would understand what you were saying. Uh, that's what it's like to talk about technological progress before the singu singularity. To talk about technological progress after the singularity and explain that, for that, the explanation exercise would be like trying to imagine how we could explain our present era to a goldfish or a flatworm. It's intrinsically inaccessible. In a very simplified way, we have makers and breakers in the world. And We've, and the smart people in the world have made so many wonderful things uh, and it's so easy for the breakers to use them. And breakers have all sorts of motives, including 
just the motive of breaking it because it's so beautiful and people are so happy with it. I think actually in the last five years, there's been, last 10 years, there's been two things that have, have made me tilt more to think that, that, the, that the makers can, can keep the breakers from bringing everything down. And the um, first of those, is the, is the penetration of cell phones between worldwide between 2000 and 2010. And that is something that it exceeds, if you had put that in a science fiction story, um, you would have gotten flack for it being, oh, that's typical 1940-ish, over the top, impossible. You know, don't you know how, how you know, social things can't change like that, especially constructive things. And, that one thing is just so awesome uh, and its impact is so awesome that that's a very big plus that ma makes me sort of tend toward the makers. And the other is, is something whose story is not finished and, and, and you know, I, we can all still be made to look very foolish if we say, it, 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 but I think in a very, it, it, a small, small things like Wikipedia, which is not a small thing, but I mean, it's a small thing compared to the end of the world. Or the, or the salvation of the, of the world. But Wikipedia, if you had asked me in 1995 again, well, what about this idea? And I said, nah, don't you know, th there are people who like to just defile, and, and when it's as easy as it is with, with the web to defile things, there are breakers out there. They, they would never let this work. And the fact that it has worked so magnificently is in, 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 a, in a way it even gives me some hope for the you know, really serious violent breakage that, that uh, technology will eventually make possible.